Hello and welcome to another video from Sustenance and Cover, the only YouTube channel you need to not only survive the current apocalypse, but actually enjoy it. And uh, we're doing another video in our series about these chicken tractors. And if you notice, I've got one that's built. <coughs> it took me about a month to build that one. Before I was trying to figure everything out and, uh, you know, I'm kind of slow on the first one. But this one here, we've been building this one for about a day and a half. Uh, no, about two weeks actually, oh. if you think about cutting all the stuff out. But anyhow, yeah, we've been putting it together for a day and a half, uh, about two days. And uh, the reason that I've, I'm making another one, I'd actually like to get eight. Now, in a, a SHTF situation, everybody understands that some animals are just really good multi-purpose animals. You know, like a goat, you can get meat off a goat. You can get uh, milk, cheese off a goat, and, and you can use a goat to keep your property kind of cleaned up. Uh, chickens, you get meat, you get eggs, and chickens, same way. They'll eat whatever waste, waste products you have. In other words, if you have excessive fruit or vegetables or, or animal parts, uh, you can feed them that. But in any case, I've got in my head, and I really believe it's true, that you know there's a lot of different ways that SHTF can play out because we don't have all the answers. I certainly don't. But I look around at these people that they talk all the time about the end of the world is coming and they're busy planting oleanders and azaleas and camellias. I mean, that's all they got in their yards is stuff like that and jasmine, you know, things that are deadly poison. And they, none of them are keeping any livestock. And I just imagine in my head that when SHTF comes or Tawaki, whatever you want to call it, that they're going to pass a message that everybody who wants a nice, free, warm meal, come on down to the FEMA camp and we'll hook you up. And I have a feeling they'll all be gone and I'll have eight free houses. <laughs> but uh, it could play out a lot of ways. It may be that when things go south, everybody pools their resources together and gets through this and all my neighbors hang around here. When they look over here at my chickens, uh, I would like to have options available to me other than just shooting them. You know, I don't have any problem with shooting my neighbors, but I really would rather be able to figure another way out of this. So, if I could build eight of these, and I could easily keep a hundred chickens up here, if uh, things get bad, I could keep uh, 30 chickens for myself and give each one of my neighbors 10 chickens. That way they've always got eggs, they will have meat occasionally, and then they won't be coming over here bothering me for eggs and chickens. And if I had eight of these, the day that everything gets bad, I could give each one of my neighbors one of these things. And, you know, I've got a friend for life, no matter how long or short my life is after that. But another thing is, I live in a city, it's illegal to keep poultry. And, you know, I, I would like to have enough of these spread throughout the woods that if the police or somebody shows up and takes the chickens I got here in the front, I'll still have hens hidden out in the back. But in any case, we'll show you how to build one of these chicken tractors in another video. If you don't want to survive, don't listen to me. 